Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night. It is the Earth Master. I got the night correct, hopefully, right? Last night, I'm not for sure why I put Saturday night, but hey, it was a long week for me. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe at about 9.43 p.m. here, California time. Show some movement up into the Alaska area with a 1.3. We'll cover the rest of the earthquake activity here in just a few minutes. I want to cover space weather activity here first as we're looking at potential auroras kicking up here tomorrow. Forecasted around the KP index of 5 or so. And this is for tomorrow night, Sunday night, with the likelihood of maybe some of the northern tier states seeing some auroras down here. Here's the view line in the red line right here could include um, portions of Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming, uh, South Dakota, and so on. But this is if you have a clear view of the northern horizon. Uh, otherwise, you have to be up here in the green uh, and into the red for overhead auroras. Now, of course, this is coming off of a, a decent CME that was kicked off here a couple days ago from this earth-facing side, earth-facing sunspot. That's going to be 3663, which is still sizzling with M flares. Uh, this is a very complex sunspot here and possible we could see another X flare or two pop off from it before it drifts off further to the uh, northwestern limb of the sun. Also notice down here this sunspot just kind of popped up and ramped up out of the blue. This uh, a couple days ago was very small and disorganized but now things are really kicking up, kicking into gear for that sunspot down here. 3664 looking quite dynamic so we have at least two major sunspots that are facing the earth and that uh, harbor potential for some strong flares right now 25 percent chance for an x flare m flare at 75 and c flare up there around 99 percent chance or so look at all this m flare activity that's been sizzling up here we've seen almost a couple close x's up here as far as the x flare class in the last 24 hours there's one two and three these are large m flares and uh, the last x flare of course was over here uh, about 48 hours or so ago uh, now while this sunspot is facing us obviously we got uh, to watch for some uh, you know the potential for some stronger flaring here right now the um, aurora forecast for tonight tonight saturday night looks quiet not a whole lot going on this forecast here is for tomorrow and tomorrow night we'll definitely keep an eye on that we could see a little bit above the uh kp index of five as forecasted um looks like five to six that'd be a g2 class storm so we'll check back on that in the morning see how things are progressing in terms of the auroras um now let's check out the cme activity and the solar wind prediction here from the space weather prediction center now the uh, x flare here that popped off a couple days ago going to be a very fast mover look at that that was the uh, x flare does look like it gives earth a uh, glancing blow there uh, tomorrow night and into um, early monday morning so we'll definitely watch that and see how these models play out sometimes they uh sometimes they nail it and then sometimes they flop it so we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on it all right let's see what's going on here for earthquake activity out here southern california rocking and rolling down here a little bit and noticing a little bit of elevated activity out here tonight scattered out and about not specifically on one fault out here but generally over the entire portion here at least in this area roughly seems like it's uh, about this fault system southward here and on the pacific side of the plate boundary getting a crunch going on here tonight with uh, quite a few earthquakes even a a little bit here in the hazard zone there on the san andreas fault that's the southern branch uh, that one's uh you know pretty well tuned and primed for a big earthquake it's been uh 300 and something years since a full rupture here along the southern branch of the san andreas fault and uh it's it's just just a matter of time here folks i mean we keep saying that i remember when i was a kid hearing about it many years ago and so on right well does not get too complacent because uh, all it takes is uh you know maybe a little swarming out here to kick things off 
There's all that earthquake activity is noted here. Got about 52 earthquakes in the Southern California area. All of those microquake, but I am noticing, like I mentioned here, a broader uptick here in the region. A little bit of swarming down here on the Imperial Fault, Brawley Seismic Zone, and also right here on the San Andreas Fault itself, along with many other fault systems here, making this an elevated area here tonight in California. Bay Area fairly quiet, Northern California quiet as well. Over here around the Blanco Fracture Zone, 4.3, this is well off the Oregon coast from earlier this afternoon. Uh, looks like that is on the strike slip fault here. A lot of times when we see this earthquake activity out here on this fault, on this plate boundary, that would add further strain out here across the Northern California area and ultimately the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. But we're really not seeing anything yet in terms of uptick uh, far as the trimmer map here tonight, let's check this out, see what we got. 63, not a big number, but 63 epicenters of trimmer here, Oregon, and a tad bit here in Northern California, but really no noticeable uptick um, along this area following this movement uh, earlier today for that 4.3. Uh, let's see here, outside of the Great Salt Lake area, 3.9 this morning, it looks like they had another 2.8 here. This area is riddled with fault systems, and, you know, they've seen some large earthquake activity out here as well. Uh, we don't really cover Utah too much, do we? But I guarantee you, uh, they do get some big earthquakes out here, and it's an absolutely geologist dream out there. I was out here on Highway 50, uh, and then I caught, uh, I think it was 70 out here last week, and man, did I see some awesome, awesome fault structure out here. Uh, in the mountain range as I was heading out uh, through the Rocky Mountains and further east. Uh, let's check out the... I'm going to check out historical data out here. We're going to go 5.7 and above for this area. And I just want to look and see what's going on here. I'll show you guys some historical data from the USGS catalog uh, for the Utah area. Just specifically Utah. We know... We know Yellowstone can see some big earthquakes. We know Idaho can see some some big ones. But, uh, you know, I feel like we leave Utah out of it uh, quite often. So let's cover and see what's going on here. Now, I put 5.7 and above since the year 1000. But that doesn't mean that all the earthquakes that have ever occurred are listed up here on the map. This is just the ones that the USGS has documented and, uh, you know, can somewhat confirm the earthquake activity. I remember this one back in 2020 here, 5.7 around the Salt Lake City area. Uh, but this area up north here where we're seeing the current ongoing activity today, seen a 6.6 .6 back in 1934. So it does look like things can get a little bit bigger out here. 1934, not quite a hundred years there uh, in terms of stress built up, but, uh, uh, 6.3 back in 1902. That's a little bit further down south. But uh, I just want to look out here and see historically. Uh, you know, it's possible they could have seen some bigger quakes out here than what is shown up on the map. But that is what the USGS has up there for now. We'll continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, up into the uh, Idaho or the uh, Wyoming, Wyoming area. Let's see if I can spit that out correctly tonight. Yellowstone National Park. There is the. Uh, that's going to be the earthquake there in Utah. That's actually going to be that uh, that 3.9 from this morning. And uh, I believe quite a few folks felt it out there around the Salt Lake City area. Ogden area. Uh, so that uh, movement definitely showed up here across this area of Wyoming. And also down here in Idaho as expected. It, it almost looks like it's a little bit bigger then a four-pointer, or a 3.9. To me, anyway. Uh, 4.8 kilometers deep. Yeah, maybe it's possible I could get revised. I don't know. It just seems like it's a little bit stronger than uh, the normal 3.9s out here across these seismograph stations at a distance. All right, so far as uh, seismograph activity or earthquake activity here in Yellowstone, looks pretty calm. Not a whole lot going on there for now. Locally. All right, out and about, Oklahoma, Kansas area. Seen some big tornadoes out there. 
in this area of Texas again today. I think that was around the um, south of Big Spring out here. They had some uh, huge tornadoes where the uh, forecast had called for it today. Uh, looks like an earthquake coming in over here to New Jersey right now. Another two-pointer. And yeah, within the last hour, it looks like it's just about ready to drop off the map. A few folks reported feeling that earthquake out here in New Jersey. Looks like just some aftershock activity occurring following that 4.8 uh, that popped off there earlier back in April. So a little bit of aftershock continuing uh, for that region. All right, another hot spot area here. The big island of Hawaii, but uh, what's going on? Where, where's all our earthquakes? It looks like things are mellowing out. Well, let's not just take uh, the map's word for it. Let's go double check and see for ourselves. Uh, I always like to zoom in here to the Kilauea volcano and check out these seismograph stations. Uh, they're going to be in the black triangles here. And it does look like things have calmed down here quite nicely in the last 12 hours or so. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity. That does not mean that things are done and over with in terms of potential eruption activity here. Uh, let's check out the deformation data. These, these things come and go. Uh, we did get a pretty decent inflation event here a couple days ago. It looks like we're stationary. Uh, and during that stationary period here, this is the uh, vertical displacement, the uh, electronic tilt at the Kilauea summit and the east rift zone, which would indicate magma um, intrusion into the area, inflation. But uh, we're kind of stationary, and the lack of earthquake activity along with this tells me that uh, we're, we're just standing on neutral ground right now. But as you can see, uh, there's been periods of similar events followed up by another higher inflation event. So we'll watch that and see if things pick back up here. Uh, possibly tonight, uh, more than likely tomorrow. All right, uh, New Zealand did see a little bit of shaking going on down there. Three point or uh, four point four early this afternoon. Thirty-four kilometers deep here. Of course, this area been dealing with a lot of deep, deep, super deep earthquakes here underneath this area. Uh, it does look like we're starting to see some after effects of that uh, deeper activity at the surface levels. This one again, thirty-four kilometers deep underneath the North Island area. Some minimal movement upstream there across the Kermadec Trench. And uh, let's see what else we got. Japan, fairly quiet. Jumbled up mess of earthquakes here across the Philippines and into the Indonesia Islands area. You know, this area is just always getting earthquake activity because it's always underneath uh, the strain of all the different plates out here. We covered that quite a bit here, and that's just it's how it is. It never really stops moving out there. A uh, bunch of twos out here in the Mediterranean today. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean fairly quiet for now. So another 2.1 coming in there to the um, the Utah area. Uh, let's go check out the Iceland activity real quick, and then I'm going to call it because I am super duper tired. I don't think I've fully recovered yet from the road trip out there. Um, I think I need to sleep like 12 hours or more <laughs> to catch up. I'm not even joking. Uh, minimal activity here across Grindavik area. Still seeing an ongoing eruption there uh, to the northeast. Really no major change. The look at the... Uh, let's go over to the 8-hour run times here across Iceland. And look for the Grindavik area. Grindavik, Grindavik. Uh, area in terms of inflation that's going to be right about here and uh, of course things are what do you guys see that's eastward movement this is upward movement displacement magma intrusion continuing here underneath the entire area while we still have the ongoing eruption so just a matter of time before we see potentially a another area showing you know some further activity or maybe even an increase in uh, the amount of magma that's providing the current eruption 5.0 peru 10 kilometers deep uh, one of the latest quakes here on the map it looks like as well just coming in all right aside from that uh, let's check out the storm prediction center still dealing with a uh, severe potential out here in those areas that seen some tornado activity today 
some big time hail as well. Goodness, uh, seen the uh, oh that famous storm chaser Reed Timmer holding what looked like a uh, a decent size baseball size hail earlier today, uh, just outside the Fort Stockton area there in Texas. So quite a bit of severe weather out there and of course as we look to monday this is going to be on the monday time frame they haven't updated their um, outlook yet we'll have to check this out in the morning as uh, far as uh, severe uh, tornado potential out here across this area i think it's going to be a very dangerous day uh, this is going to have to be watched pretty closely i'll probably do a more in-depth study on this and forecast uh, for tomorrow uh, as we get closer to that Monday time frame. All right, guys, I am out of here. Um, seismograph stations, couple earthquakes there on the Anza station. Very small, spiky earthquake acti activity in Southern Cal. Uh, and like I say, it's, you know, when you look at these maps 24 seven and you see all these earthquakes pop up and in, in various locations, this is definitely quite elevated, more so than normal. Uh, and even though they're little quakes, you know, don't let anyone tell you there's no earthquakes out here, right? Well, if you put the 2.5 and above, yeah, it looks like there's very minimal. But there's a lot going on out here. It looks like things are wanting to move out here in Southern California right now. So just keep an eye on the SoCal area overnight. And uh, we'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. Stay safe. And uh, I'm, I'm going to go to bed and try to get some good sleep. Have a good one, folks.